Hi friends, haven't seen you in a while. Okay, I'm gonna not speak like this. One of my pet peeves is just uh, people on the YouTubes being all hyper energy, like, hey friends, what's up? Welcome back to the... We are not idiots. We do not need to be spoken to in this way. One of people's favorite moves with uh, replacing us humans. So, what do I wanna talk about today? This is a continuation, basically, of the world-renowned cult hit Reading with Robin. I don't even know what I, what, what I have up on this channel anymore, so I'm just gonna take a little step back for a second. There'll be more music coming, don't worry about it. Some of you may know, but my, my, my mom is basically an insightful linguist, and, and my dad is, a, is an eccentric poet. So, needless to say, language has always been a part of my life. I've used it fairly often. I've used it in the uh, primarily romance variations, but the Spanish variation, which is used by, you know, illegal immigrants all over the Americas. And also it's a French variation used by, uh, you know, the French. So yeah, I want to go back to language. I don't even have a book on me right now. We're going to start bookless because the new generations, well, books are, are for losers. So I want to focus on this one word, which I think describes the current state of affairs perfectly. I guess you could say it's actually the most perfect word we have to describe the state of the world as of now. And that is the word nightmare. And it's a, it's a very fascinating word. I mean, we look at anything happening in the world today and nightmare just applies perfectly. You look at uh, Ukraine, nightmare. Politics, nightmare. People, nightmare. Sleeping, nightmare. It's just probably our best word, the best word we've come up with so far. And we've come up with a lot of words. It's a perfect word. It applies to any scenario you can imagine. The weather, nightmare. Climate, nightmare. Electric cars, nightmare. Genders, nightmare. Everything, nightmare. But in and of itself, like even its physical components are also quite, quite amazing. Basically a nightmare, it's made up of two words. It's a compound word, night, which we all are familiar right now, it's day, but night is later in the day when the day ends and it's night, which is actually only an illusion. It's just the earth is rotating. And yes, I hate to say it, but the earth is round. So it rotates and that's why we get night. We're basically in a big shadow. Right now it's day as we've clearly established and later on it will be night. But then there's a more fascinating part of the word, which is mare. And it doesn't take somebody with a PhD to realize that mare is a horse without a penis. And this is not a, a trans horse or anything like this, but basically a horse without a penis. One might even say uh, a female horse uh, because they, they have names. The male is a, a horse and the female is mare. So a horse and a mare. Yeah, basically, is it not fascinating how these two words come together? So what do you do to solve such a mystery. Well, it's not solved because it's not like it needs to be solved, but to get to the bottom of the, of the issue. When I was a kid, you would ponder this and you could spend hours and hours pondering. But nowadays, we have an extension to our brain, which is this thing over here, over here, a computer. But a computer in and of itself is not that cool unless it has the internet. And this computer does have the, the internet. So you basically turn to the internet now whenever you have a pressing existential question such as what does nightmare mean? Well, we know what it means, but where does the word come from? Where does it originate? And this is what is called etymology. The etymology of etymology, first of all, okay, what we want to know is something more, more meaty, more juicy. Yeah, like etymology. Of course, you, you can sense that there's some like Greek vibes going on. Anytime you see like logos, legit, there's some Greekness going on. Let's just first look at etymology, what the etymology of etymology is, but then we'll get to, to the very important point, which what is the etymology of nightmare? And I think some minds will be blown because my theory is that it's night and female horse, and this is a very scary thing. Like academics and the mainstream media want us to believe otherwise, which we will find right now in, in the internet. So please uh, join me over here at the computer. Come, come. He's happiest when he's with his best friends. The lions and the kangaroos. Slip, 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 slipping away. That is the nature of days. Oh, hello there. Didn't see you there. Hip, hip dysplasia, I don't wanna deal with that. Let's close everything here. And everything here, so many windows you need to be organized. So we were saying etymology, oh wait. Let's, let's get some screen recording going. That's a very important part of uh, producing a successful YouTube. Let's start our little rabbit hole adventure. Etymology. Back. 
make this nice and big. Why did I highlight all? Etymology. The study of the origin of words and the way in which their meanings have changed throughout history. But what I want is the etymology of etymology, and here we have it under origin. Late Middle English from Old French etymologie. Yeah, no shit. Via Latin from Greek, as I was saying. I told you there were little Greek vibes in there, so I wasn't lying. Etymologia, neuter, singular of etymos, true. Well, that's not really getting us anywhere, because like the study of truth, yeah. Let's uh, do a bit more of an advanced uh, search here. So let's say etymology of etymology. So we get past Google, they are an evil corporation and they are lying to us. I am kidding, Google's the best, I love them. That's why I'm on YouTube. Here's our next clue, taking us back to my Gesamtkunstwerk word, nightmare. But there are many, many words in the English language that have unexpected and fascinating origins. Could nightmare be such a word? We don't need to go further, we're happy with that. So let's type in, first let's just type in the word nightmare. Nightmare. Wikipedia. The source of all truth. The source of all etumus. It's an unpleasant dream that can cause a strong emotional response from the mind, typically fear, but also despair, anxiety, or great sadness. Not just sadness, great sadness. So if, if your nightmare just causes you a little bit of sadness, it ain't a nightmare. If we jump a little bit lower here, we have, wait, what was that little logo that popped up? Or night, oh, a night terror. <laughs> I love this image of a kid. Um, this blanket, it looks like they basically put a huge, uh, how can I say this to not get uh, censored by the system, a huge uh, sausage. But anyway, etymology. The word nightmare is derived from the Old English mare, a mythological demon or goblin who torments others with frightening dreams. The term has no connection with the modern English word for a female horse. And here is where the campaign of disinformation begins. It has nothing to do with a female horse. Well, we, we shall see about that. The word nightmare is cognate with the Dutch term nachtmerrie. I have no idea how to pronounce the thing in Dutch because Dutch is a silly language that nobody uses. And German, ah, a fine language there, nachtmar. But it is dated. Okay, so we have several little clues. Here, this source of fake news is basically claiming that mare in Old English meant a demon or a goblin. So let's take a look at that. So here the definition is a female horse or other equine animal, especially when fully mature or of breeding age. There's a mare with a tiny horse, also called a cub. Uh, what, wait, let's see. What do you call a baby horse? I know this. It's a foal. See, I'm faster than the internet. You'd be a fool if you didn't know it was a foal. Is mare an insult? That's interesting. It is generally used as an affectionate insult. Oh, you dumb little mare. Okay, I've never heard that used in that way, but anyway, I don't live on a farm, so. So, mare. Etymology. Mare, origin. Old English. Mare. Mare, mare. Celtic. Mare, horse, mare, mare. From a Germanic base with cognates in Celtic languages meaning stallion. Or stallion. Oh, and here we go to the ingrained systemic sexism. Okay, so mare, basically, the second definition, is a very unpleasant or frustrating experience. I mean, obviously this word was coined by a man, by a married man. A very poor performance, especially in sports. This, this research is taking us in a different direction. This is a whole other topic that I think I'm gonna have to delve into into part two. Patriarchal sexism of the word mare. There's a third one, mare, plural noun of Maria. Hey, look at these Marias. No, no, look at these mares. A large level basalt plain on the surface of the moon appearing dark by contrast with highland areas. Okay. So no mention of mare because as we saw in the earlier thing, the like, you know, big media, all these things don't want us to get to the truth. So let's put in night, 
nightmare etymology. It's in purple because I already searched it so I know what's gonna happen, but it, because it changed. So etymology, the word nightmare is derived from the Old English mare, mythological, we've already read. This is what, what, what I find so crazy, like they have to specify, the term has no connection with the modern English word for female horse. Why, why do they care so much? What if it has a slight connection? I mean, can't words be free to establish the connections that they would like to establish? I mean, I feel that this is very limiting the potential of the word mare, and they wanted to stick to, this person sucks at sports. What a mare, what a nightmare. Nachmer, nightmare. Okay, Ma, more. In German, somehow, nightmare is nightmore. It doesn't seem very logical. I had a more night. Eh? Oh, you can, I'm in great distress. I, I had more night. Wait, well, use it, like sleep some more. It sounds amazing. Let's look at the etymology of more in English. More etymology. More comes from the Dutch and the German mer. So anyway, right now we're basically at an impasse. We have the big corporate media telling us that the mare and nightmare has nothing to do with a female horse. However, I would like to change this notion for good because I feel that academics and CEOs are trying to hold humanity back with their lies. So I brought some evidence. A new horse. Two farmhands shared a room. Gay. One slept at the back of the room, the other slept near the door. After a while, the one who slept near the door began to feel very tired early in the day. His friend asked what was wrong. An awful thing happens every night, he said. A witch turns me into a horse and rides me all over the countryside. I'll sleep in your bed tonight, his friend said. We'll see what happens to me. This is the way stories should be told, by the way. It's like, cut out all the fat, just jump to the point. Hey, this guy's having these insanely weird things happen to him at night. Hey, let me sleep in your bed, see if it happens to me. I got your back, man. That's a good farm hand right there. Okay, so about midnight, an old woman who lived nearby came into the room. She mumbled some strange words over the farmhand and he found he couldn't move. Then she slipped a bridle on him and he turned into a horse. The next thing he knew, she was riding him across the fields at breakneck speed, beating him to make him go even faster. Soon they came to a house where a party was going on. There was a lot of music and dancing. They were having a big time inside. She hitched him to a fence and went in. While she was gone, the farmhand rubbed against the fence until the bridle came off and he turned back into a human being. Then he went into the house and found the witch. He spoke those strange words over her, and with the bridle he turned her into a horse. Then he rode her to a blacksmith and had her fitted with horseshoes. This farmhand is very clever. After that, he rode her to the farm where she lived. I have a pretty good filly here. And that brings us back to our eternal quest for the meaning of worth, a filly. I have a pretty good filly here. He told her husband, I don't know why I gave him a little southern twang, I just lack better. But I need a stronger horse, one that's good at sports. Okay, that's a reference there. Uh, would you like to trade? The old man looked her over and he said he would do it. Because why does the old man need a better horse? He traded for a worse horse. Yeah, of course this makes sense. So they picked out another horse and the farmhand rode away. Her husband led his new horse to the barn. He took off the bridle and went to hang it up. But when he came back, the new horse was gone. Instead, there stood his wife with horseshoes nailed to her hands and feet. Ages nine and up. So if you're under nine, please. Uh... Okay, the following persons helped me to prepare this book, blah, 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 who sat in the loft of a barn with me in Maine and told me scary stories. So obviously these stories come from a deep knowledge of an ancient civilization that is now lost to us, but here is a true information. I don't think it takes a PhD person to realize that this story contains the origin of the word nightmare, the true origin. Basically, a horse witch, mare, not very good at sports, who comes at night to ride you. That is the nightmare. That, that way the term makes perfect sense. None of this like, oh, mare is like a little demon or goblin. Who's ever heard of that? Oh, look at that mare there. No, 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 you would say, look at that demon or goblin or incubus, succubus, whatever. Not a mare. Let's stop the lies here. I believe that this proves it. The true meaning of nightmare established. It's just a fascinating world there. Yeah, if you wanna hear some great workout music, please feel free to peruse uh, this uh, thing that's called a, a channel. Thanks for watching. Bye.